All right, happy Wednesday, folks. We continue our FUMC CV prayer devotional. Today we are praying for um, a, a, a school and a student, Henry Besa, who's pursuing a BS in computer science at Sikkim Menopal University in Ghana. And uh, he's getting a scholarship from the United Methodist Women. And we are thankful for all of the institutions and organizations, especially in uh, places where education has been uh, scarce and uh, reserved for uh, the wealthy and the privileged and for a democratization of education. We know could lead to a democratization of our world and of resources and what could be better than that. And so um, we pray for uh, the United Methodist Women who give this scholarship and we pray for the educators at that school, uh, for this student, um, Henry, um, and his classmates and uh, for all those who are growing up in places where education is not uh, assumed um, whether that be in the U.S., uh, in different communities, or around the world, um, that um, everyone might have the opportunity for uh, the blinders of a, an, a lack of education, uh, for the kind of blinders that that puts on us. And uh, sort of thinking of the lack of education as blinders that, that you know blind us to certain things, I was thinking about this spiritual blindness passage, Gospel of John, chapter 9, verse 35. Gospel of John, chapter 9, verse 35. says, so As Jesus had heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I come into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. So it's this conversation that Jesus is having with the Pharisees about, and, and this is true, so many of the healing passages, especially healing of blindness, that what we should read in, as we read the gospel and we read these kind of stories, what we should read is, yes, a person is being healed of blindness, but also we should read deeper, something spiritual into that. Is Jesus talking about a bigger message here? Is there a spiritual blindness? So for example, this happens with sleep as well. Jesus goes into the garden, leaves three disciples. He comes back, they're sleeping. He goes again to pray. He comes back, they're sleeping. He goes again to pray. He comes back. He tells them to stay awake. He comes back, they're sleeping. Is it really a story about three guys who can't keep their eyes open? Or is it a story about three people, three guys who were asleep to the realities of what was happening in Jesus' life, to what God was doing in that moment in the Garden of Gethsemane? Same thing about blindness. Uh, when we see these passages. Is there a blindness, a spiritual blindness that we have that disables us from seeing more clearly the values of God in ourselves or in others? And every time we take an opportunity to educate someone further, whether it's in a secular education or a religious education, we are giving them a greater ability to see God's creation, and to see what part God is asking them to play in the next steps of creation. And so I think of a scholarship given to a student to uh, a computer science course as actually a way of making the world better um, and diminishing spiritual blindness, which may lay in this student or in others, giving them a better opportunity to see the realities of the world and to enact the values of God upon those realities. God bless. Have a great day. Take care.